Howdy partner. So you want to learn how to lay a concrete slab? Well, you're in luck. I'm going to show you today. Today is part one in a multi-part series on how to build an outdoor kitchen. We'll be releasing videos through the whole process. If you like what you're seeing or learning anything at all, please hit that subscribe button, lower right, and that'll go ahead and keep getting these new videos to you. So back to it. We have a nice setup here with the grill. Um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get rid of this old cover, the grill, these stones. We're going to dig it out a little deeper, and then we're going to go ahead and start framing out for our slab. So this video today is going to concentrate on just the prep and the slab, and then we'll have more videos in this series. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Ground has been broken. Well, we've been working out here for a couple days now. Um, we hit a little bit of uh, bad weather, so now we've gotten back on track. As you can see, we removed all the old uh, stuff that was here, and we've gone ahead and prepped it for our concrete slab. Just a few things on the prep. It's a lot of hard work, but it's really not complicated. You want to try to dig it out to make sure your slab's going to be at least four inches thick. So that's going to be part of it. I'm using two by fours, which I know are only about three and a half, but we're a little below them. Um, and uh, we made sure everything is nice and level. Now with the concrete mix that we're going to use, we're aiming at about 5,000 PSI is what I'm hoping for on the concrete, which means it's going to be strong enough that it doesn't need rebar or wire mesh reinforcement. But what we're going to go ahead and do is, if you come on over, we've, we've got ahead and bought some four foot rebar and I had some old wire mesh and all this will do is strengthen it. Concrete, as it gets hot and cold, will expand and contract. You're bound to get some expansion joints and some cracks, but this makes it stronger. Do you need it? No. You can pour a slab of four inch thickness without it, but it does help to make it to where it's less likely to crack. So once you make your frame, you want to go ahead and you're just going to take some stakes and you're just going to hammer them in every few feet. You can put a screw in the back or a nail, but you want to make sure that it stays below the level of the, of the frame. And the reason why is because once we put the concrete in here and we start trying to smooth it out, you don't want to hit your stakes. The other thing to remember is you want to make sure that you have the, the water on rain and whatnot uh, running off the right way. So for this one, we did a slight slope on all sides going this way, and then we kind of are gonna create a uh, water basin here. We want to keep the water away from the house. You never want the water to slope towards your house. As a close up on here, you don't need a very extreme um, slant. Let me go ahead and get a good spot. Just right about there is what kind of slant we're looking at. Just something that's just off center so that we can go ahead and make sure that it's running. It's not an exact science, but it can be. The last thing is right here on the corners, we have some deep, deeper holes. Those are footers for a pergola that we're going to end up building as part of this project. So this project's going to have an L-shaped outdoor kitchen with pergola that'll go off here and attach to the wall. So I ran the rebar out to tie into that. We're likely to get an expansion joint and a crack part right there as well, but the rebar should help to tie it in. So this area here, I got to totally do the calculations. There's a lot of online calculators for how much concrete you need. I think I'm going to need, it's about six foot by six foot by four inches, probably about 1600 pounds of concrete. So that's 20, 80 pound bags or 27, I think 25, 60 pound bags. So I'll go to the store, figure out what I feel like moving and lifting. That'll be the hardest part of the whole job. And uh, tomorrow we'll go ahead and start pouring. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, likes, comments, any questions you got, and we'll catch up tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so we've got all of our materials set up, ready to do this concrete pour. It ended up being 23 bags, 80 pound bags of concrete what I got. I, we needed about 20, um, went ahead and got three extra. You don't want to run out of concrete during the middle of this job. Now let me just tell you from experience of loading up and bringing this, putting this in my truck, bringing it to the backyard, this whole project. Um, this is heavy, it's a lot of work. In the past I've called Ready Mix and gotten a truck shipment of uh, concrete brought straight to the house. That's the way to do it if you can. It's easy, it's not that expensive and it gives you a great product. But if you're in an area like this where we're in the back of a house, um, we can't, you have to do it by wheelbarrow anyways, or the job's not that big and you can't get a small enough shipment, then you're just gonna have to do it this way. You can also rent a mixer, a power mixer, 
We're not going to do that today. I'm just going to hand mix it. Um, some of the tools you need for this is going to be a uh, straight edge to go ahead and level it out. We'll show you that as we're going. You're going to have your wheelbarrow, obviously, a hose. Once you figure out how much water you need, you want to keep this pretty consistent. Now, today's not a very hot day, so it's, the concrete's not going to dry really fast. If it were to dry really fast, you might need to make it a little wetter than normal. But you're going to take a bucket, fill it with water, and go ahead and mark it off so that way you can kind of have a same starting point for all your different mixes. So you keep a good consistent uh, concrete mix through your slab. Your other tools, you start with the with the 2x4 straight edge. Then um, you're going to go ahead and use a hand trowel to smooth it out more. And finally, you'll finish it when it's pretty hard, when you can you know, kind of get a thumbprint into it. You're going to go ahead and take a broom and just lightly drag it across the surface. And that'll go ahead and give it a rough texture. And that texture keeps it from being slippery. You know, you think of a garage floor that's real slippery, that's what you're trying to avoid. So you want it to be more like a driveway. So that's where you're going to use um, your broom. And then you can also get a, an edging tool that goes ahead and you can work that along the edge as the last step. And that'll give it a nice radius edge and just make it look nice. Final trick is if you've ever poured concrete, you know the forms can sometimes stick. We really don't want that. So you can use Pam cooking spray and just lightly spray all that. And it'll help these come off easier at the end. And we'll show you that. Other methods are uh, mineral oil, um, canola oil. Some people use, use motor oil, which is not very environmentally friendly. So you have different options. But we're going to go ahead and start mixing and uh, start in the back. And then we're going to work our way forward. And uh, stay tuned. Here we go. Once you've made your mix, you want it to not be soupy, but you want it to be kind of like this. Nice, pliable mix. You go ahead. I've been dumping the wheelbarrows, but right now I'm trying to kind of fill in the back cracks with some extra. And then, to give it one more over here, once you go ahead and uh, get most of your area filled in, I'll show you how you just kind of are going to take this straight edge You just want to take this and you just kind of want to work it in a back and forth motion as you fill this in. So I'll perfect this a little bit, but as we keep going like this, you start to see we're going to smooth that out, give that a little bit of work, and then what we want to do is want to keep working that smooth edge as we keep adding it and we'll just keep attaching it on. Got to work pretty quickly, so uh, stay tuned. Well, we got all the, co all the concrete down. Uh, it took just about two hours. And I know my calculation said 20 bags. We bought 23, it ended up being 20 and a half a bag. So almost exactly at 20. Um, but it was good that we had a little reserve. So now what we've waited for is we waited for the top to kind of dry and all the water on the top to disappear. We smoothed it with a hand trowel. Now you take a broom, and you can just use any type of push broom, and you want to very gently just rest it on the edge and just pull it ever so gently across the top of the concrete. And that's all you need. Just let the weight of the broom do the work. We've already done it in the back, and now we just want to roll it nice and softly in one direction, in one motion, across the surface. A common problem when you're doing this type of work is that people will overwork the concrete. You don't want to overwork the concrete. You're not going to get perfection, although we don't like to. So you want to get as close as you can without it. One more thing to note, I went along with an edging tool and I'm going to go ahead and clean up a little bit. You'll see right here, I put an expansion joint. This is where that pergola is going to sit. There's a footer in here, but more than likely this is going to crack. So we went ahead and rounded these corners and this way, if it does crack, it'll be underneath the expansion joint and it should come out very good. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a break and then we'll pop this off in a couple days and uh, see how the entire project looked. Uh, turns out. Thanks a lot. So we've let the concrete dry for a couple days. It's supporting this tremendous amount of weight we got on it, but uh, we're just taking the forms off. Um, I like to take out the uh, stakes first, but just to show everyone, remember we did that quick little uh, Pam trip, Pam trick, where we sprayed it down to make sure the 
forms come off real easy. If you've ever done this before, sometimes the forms will stick to the concrete, but with that trick, they come out just that easy. And you're good to go. Definitely worth it to just give it a quick spray. Wow! Wow! wow. Like, comment, and subscribe! Thanks, girls. All right. Well, we are all done with our slab. Um, it's been here for about a week now. It's drying out um, and it looks great. We went ahead and did some water tests, also got some rain. All the water is running away from the house. We've got no cracks, nice edges, everything else. Hopefully it stays that way. So I hope that this video helped you to understand how to pour a small slab. Again, this is the first video in our series on the outdoor kitchen. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And by doing so, you'll go ahead and see as I release more videos, when we start to build out our kitchen, finish the top, and really uh, build a pergola and make this area really nice. So thanks for watching Mr. Greg's How To. Appreciate the likes. Any comments you have, any questions, go ahead and put them there. Thanks a lot. Howdy, partner. Do you want to learn how to drive a new red car? We're going to walk this through today. First, we pick the car over here. It's so back of the way. So I'm trying to get my water soaked. My butt soaked, but that's okay. We'll just top in. And we'll, um, good to go. <laughs> and we'll start driving on the car. Let's see go coming out of the car. And you can pretend that you're um, driving in a car. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Um, this is Mia's How To. I have more videos coming out. Take care. Done. <laughs>